F980925 Communion versus Authority Because you are familiar with the fountainhead of prophecy by reason of use over these many years, you have resorted to speaking from that wellspring my words of communication to you when you began hearing my voice. This is permitted, this is acceptable, and is even at times desirable in order to accurately record my words to you, says the Spirit of Grace. However, I do not want you to think it is required, nor do I want you to teach that it is mandatory that the flow of my mind to believers must be by this method. For now, because you are familiar with that flow, when you hear my voice in your ear, you immediately speak as though it was prophecy. No one understand this, says the Spirit of the Lord. Ultimately, you and I shall hold conversations completely internal where no verbal speaking is required at all. For your mind's sake, I remind you of the Mount of Transfiguration, where the Lord took Peter, James, and John. Their eyes were opened so they could see Moses and Elijah talking with him. But no one understand that he was communing with them in spirit long before the eyes of the disciples were opened. Son, the kingdom of God is within you. There is a whole realm of the kingdom which operates by the laws of the spirit of which you are primarily ignorant at this hour. Seek not the voice of Moses, Elijah, nor any who have preceded you. Seek only my voice. But I will say unto you now, that as you continue to sit in the classroom of my counsel and instruction, there is much for you to learn that your mind has not even thought of. There are benefits, there are operations of the kingdom available within you, many of which you shall never grasp in your lifetime. But you shall grasp much more than you know at this time. But as Jesus communed with Moses and Elijah and with me in his spirit without verbal communication being required, so you shall commune with me in your spirit without verbal communication being required. And it must needs be so, for there shall be those times, as I have spoken unto you, when the hurricane and the storms shall be raging about you and the voices of many detractors and many antagonists shall be railing upon you as one to be crucified. Yet in the midst of that storm there shall be complete peace within you, as you and I commune internally. As I have spoken, my voice shall be the loudest voice you hear, even when they are shouting and railing with great tumult. With practice and experience, you will have my counsel internally at all times within your spirit, without the need of verbal speaking. You will be sitting at tables of counsel, and as they banter about their variations of the wisdom of man, you will be hearing my counsel as I bring you the wisdom of God. When it is time for you to speak, you will not have to turn to me and only then receive my wisdom, for you will have already heard my wisdom within you. You will simply deliver it by speaking unto men. Know and understand that it is perfectly acceptable to the Lamb for you to continue to voice my words as though they originated from the fountainhead of prophecy and record them as you are doing this day. It is important for your call that you make record of our discussions at this point, but as your teacher I am instructing you. It is not necessary for you to be speaking simultaneously with the hearing of my voice. It is one method. It is easier for you now because you are quite familiar with the wellspring of prophecy. But do not limit my communion with you to that method, as being the only method whereby I commune with the spirits of Christ's brethren. Continue practicing being aware of my presence. As you do so, the hearing of my voice within your spirit, and even the dialogue between yourself and myself in your spirit, shall become more and more clear, more easily discerned with every passing day. You and I shall be in constant fellowship. That is the mind of Christ for all believers, that there be no hour of the day where you have not the wisdom of Christ available unto you. You and I shall be as one, walking the earth together, restoring the will of the Father by the life of Christ within you, as I anoint that life with dominion. Know and understand the difference between communion in heart and the release of authority upon the earth. Communion between the Spirit of the living God and the Lamb's brethren, is possible on a completely internal basis, 
without the need of verbal speaking. It is not so with the release of authority. During the remainder of this dispensation, where the corporeal body is required for authority, the speaking of words and corresponding action according to his instruction is required to release authority in the name of Jesus by the Spirit to restore the will of the Father in the earth. There is a difference between communion and authority. Communion is done in spirit and in soul. Authority is released through the corporeal body by words and by action, says the Spirit of Grace. Never confuse the two. It is for that very reason that hope alone will not manifest results in the earth. It is for that very reason that faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith requires believing in the heart and speaking with the mouth. No results shall be forthcoming without the speaking of the word of authority and corresponding actions that agree with that speaking. In heaven this is not so, but upon the earth it is. Be pleased to know that I heard and recorded the decision you made in your heart this morning says the Spirit of Grace. I search your heart on a continual basis. I listen and I watch as you ponder and weigh the words I have spoken unto you. I watch to see which decision you shall make, whether they be decisions toward me or away from me. Be pleased to know that I saw, I heard, and I recorded your decision when you said in your heart this day, I will completely trust everything that the Spirit of my Father says unto me. Well done, son, well done. I am pleased. For this reason I am now released to bring you more precise instruction regarding administration and the transfer of wealth. Half-hearted hope and clouded vision has been the primary hindrance to more manifestations of my power through your faith, says the Spirit of Grace. Because of your lack of understanding of the necessity of godly hope, and your almost total reliance upon the spoken word. I have only been able to manifest certain things you have requested. There was not sufficient image within you for faith to give substance to. On those occasions where you have given me hope in full measure, and the speaking of words that appropriate from that hope, I have freely manifested all things that you believed, that you received when you prayed. But where hope is not fully defined... Faith cannot appropriate no matter the volume of speaking. For this reason I have given you instruction to see the image of Christ in full measure within your hope. For this is an image which cannot be altered. In your heart there is no doubt concerning the Father's will in regard to Him. Your heart fully trusts that Christ is the will of the Father. Because that is so, develop your ability to erect hope in your soul by focusing upon the image of Christ as revealed in the Gospels, and as revealed by the Spirit of God. As you learn to incorporate that image, which cannot be altered, you will be more and more changed into that same image by the seed of Him who is planted in you, and by the transforming power of the Holy Spirit of the living God. As that transformation process continues, your mind will be more and more conformed to His mind. You will increasingly understand the will of the Father in all realms, not just those regarding things of the Spirit, but of things in the material realm as well. You will not be questioning what the Father's will is regarding the moving, the flow, the transference of material things, but your hope shall become rock solid, set on bedrock, understanding the mind of Christ and the will of the Father for His sons. This understanding shall solidify your feet on the foundation of grace, and your hope shall abound beyond the limits that constrain it this day. Your increased understanding of the Father's will in these matters will cause your hope to be erected as a monument of solid stone, which cannot be moved by circumstances, says the Lord. Hope must not be a thing made of vapors, nor be a flowing thing such as liquid, but hope must be erected as a solid substance within you first, before faith can manifest that substance in the material realm. The things that have prevented you from understanding the Father's mind are still those things, those dregs of religion that remain at the bottom of your vessel. But be of good cheer, for each day that you spend with me, I am scooping out these dregs and washing away even the stain of them from your soul. As you continue to spend time with me, 
I am transforming your mind to conform with the very mind of Christ, who is free from all such dregs. Even your soul shall become a vessel purified with the very mind of Christ. Even the suggestion of thoughts of religion shall be things to be abhorred, and you will instantly reject them. For you shall know him whom the Father has sent, and by him you shall know the Father who sent him. This is eternal life, and you shall walk in more and more and more of this life, not just in this lifetime, but for all eternity, says the Spirit of Grace. For this season, learn to simply ask of me before you make your petitions. Is this request according to the mind of Christ or not? You and I will discuss them before you make the petitions. At times I may say, alter this, change that, increase this, decrease that. I will reveal to you the timing for certain things that must needs be. I am your counselor. I will help you prepare your petitions ahead of time. This will eliminate much wavering in your hope. This will cause each petition you make to the Father to be made upon the foundation of hope that is rock solid like an image in you that cannot be moved. No longer upon the wavering shores of sand upon which you have tried to live by faith in the past. Just simply ask, son. Just simply ask, son. I will tell you the truth. It is not the Father's will that you be without His counsel regarding every petition. He sees your heart, son. He knows. He knows your desire is to please Him. And yes, yes, review with me those petitions that you now have standing before the throne. Together we will adjust them. We will revise them that you may resubmit them. This time when they are submitted, they will be submitted in such a manner that your hope will stand full stature within your soul, that faith may take you from that solid substance and manifest them solidly in the earth. This is the delivery system from your provider.